Hello, so before we start the solution video of module two, I wanted to show you uh, what the module two notebook looks like because it does look a little bit different than the notebook that we left off with in the first module. So I'll show you what the differences are. So the one you see here on the left side of the screen is the module one notebook, the, what, what we did uh, latest. And on the right side, you see the module two notebook. So what you will see in the next video. So what I did very briefly, I'll explain it here is that I put everything in a um, data science skeleton. So we talked about data science skeleton before and what it has is basically it has this table of contents and on top of it, it also has the um, uh, headlines for every uh, different section. So I basically uh, divided my code into different sections. What I did here, as you can see, is I have the import library section. As I did here, I import pandas, but I also import numpy this time because I need it for uh, some of the things that I'm going to do in the second module. And I also include this magical nice comment here from matplotlib. It is actually called a magic comment. It helps you show your plots in line. When you don't include this, most of the time you cannot really show your, even if you try to print your plot, it doesn't really show the plot itself. But when you use this magic comment with matplotlib, you are now able to show your plots inside the Jupyter Notebook while you're coding. So that's a good plus. Um, the next thing that we're going to see is the import data section. As you can see here, I was just importing the data very uh, simply. And what I did is I basically copied and pasted the same uh, code here, but with one uh, addition. Now I have the concatenation function. And what it does is basically, as you know, we work with only the January data of 2019 and we might want to include other months in the future. So this is kind of a preparation for the future. Uh, with this concatenation, what I can do is once I have the February data, I will have January and February in different uh, the, um, data frames. And then I will be able to put the February data also here. And then it will concatenate them into one data frame called data uh, taxi underscore data. And the next thing that I do here is basically the same as calling head or shape in different uh, cells. I just bring them together where I can see the first five uh, rows of the data frame. I also want to see the number of rows and number of columns. So that's basically it. So what we did so far is we imported libraries. We imported our data to our notebook. And what we're going to start doing is to explore the data. Just make sure before you watch this video though, you give it a chance yourself, try to explore the data yourself and then watch this video so you can see what I do and what you did. And you know, maybe you'll so you learn something on top of it. Because if you just watch videos of other people doing something, it's not very um, helpful for you to learn. I always think that it's better when you try something and you fail or you know you don't really understand what's happening and then someone explains things to you i feel like that's much more helpful so yeah let's start um we already seen this before so what i do when i start exploring the data first is basically i look at the i want to look at the columns so we've seen the columns before in our um, dictionary data dictionary which is here but before I go further with any sort of data um, analysis, data exploration, I also just want to choose the ones that I need. I don't really want to work with the columns that are really useless for me. So what I did, as you can see here, I've already chosen the ones that are helpful for me. Well, let's go over them one by one and see, and I'll tell you why I didn't include them. So vendor ID, as you can see, I didn't include, and this is why. So it says a code indicating the TPEP provider that provided the record. I really don't think this is going to be useful. I think this is just kind of like um, the technology that was used in the car to send the data from the car to the, the wherever or whoever is collecting it. Um, so that's not very useful. So I didn't include it. Uh, pickup time is very important. Drop of time, not sure, but I'll keep it here for now. Passenger count, I think is very relevant. Trip distance is relevant. Um, rate code ID. Let's see what that is. It's the final rate code and effect at the end of the trip. So yeah, if, if they're going to the airport or not, if they're in a specific place, if it's a group ride. So I'll just keep it for now. I'm not sure, but you know, maybe it'll be useful. Um, store and forward flag. Uh, whether the trip record was held in vehicle memory before sending it to the vendor. Uh, I don't think that's very relevant to what I'm trying to do. 
Uh, location ID is important to pick up location ID. The drop off location ID is important. Payment type. Uh, I kept it for now. So it's basically if it's credit card, it was cash or anything else. Um, so this might not be very relevant in terms of uh, predicting how much money a person is going to spend on a cab. But at the same time, it's important when I want to clean the data, let's say that there are some problems, then I, this will give me more information about the problem problem problematic <laughs> data points. So th that's why I'm keeping it. Fair amount is exactly what we need. Uh, extra, I think that was some sort of tax. Yeah, that's not important for us. Um, again, a tax, we don't want it. Tip amount, I thought that was not very relevant. Tolls amount, same. Improvement surcharges, again, some sort of surcharge or tax. Um, and we have the total amount. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, I didn't include the fair amount. I included the total amount because that's basically everything together. And that's the amount of money that the taxi drivers are earning. So that's the relevant one. Uh, and congestion surcharge, it's basically if there's traffic or not. I think everything is included in total amount, so I don't need it. So the list we have is here. So I'll just run this. Oh, I think I will run it, I'll run it again. Um, and then this will basically filter the data that we have to a smaller one so we can quickly look at it. And now this is the data that we have. This is what we had before with a lot of irrelevant information that we didn't need. And this is what we have right now. And yeah, so after we look at this, you can say, well, we're not exploring it. We're doing something, things to it, but uh, we will start exploring it now. So one of my favorite ways of exploring the data is actually plotting it. Uh, and the plot that I'm going to use right now is called a histogram. And we will be plotting the histograms of all the features. So uh, this kind of gives us like an overall idea of uh, what might be wrong with it. Um, but let me first tell you how to read a histogram and what this thing that we're seeing here means. So as you can see, we have one plot for each feature that we have. So, or each column, if you like, but I mean, you should get used to calling these features. Um, so for example, what happens here is that this plot shows us that for these values of this column, we have this many instances. So, uh, for example, let's say this is like 265. We have, how many is this? I mean, let's say 500,000 instances of um, the drop off location ID being 265. Um, so this is kind of a way to see the distribution of all the values so that, you know, if you see that there is a problem, for example, right now we're looking at 2019 data. If we see that there are values out of that are not 2019, then we'll say, okay, these are these do not belong to this data, and there is a problem with it. Um, yeah, so you can see, you know, here it's fine. We have different drop-off location IDs, and it's normal that some of them are a little bit more, some of them are a little bit less. Uh, same with the pickup location ID. Uh, let's go to passenger count. You know, it's normal that we have mostly one passenger trips. Uh, occasionally there are more passengers. Sometimes there are zero. I mean, we would have to look into this, but maybe this was a data entry mistake. Something went wrong with it, but it's not very important because it's very little. Uh, again, trip distance apparently is always very small, but maybe it's because I don't know if this exactly is zero, but maybe, you know, uh, this was a trip that did not really record the trip distance or something might have gone wrong with it, but we'll look at it more closely later. Uh, payment type, I guess it's normal to have one or two because one or two were credit card and cash. So I guess that would be the uh, most common ones to have. Uh, so when we look at these ones, they're actually alerting us to something. So for example, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean with the rate code ID. So when you see this, you might only be seeing a bar here and maybe a tiny, tiny bit one here. But actually, if we only had values in this part of the graph, it wouldn't be showing us this whole part. So what this means is that even if it's one, there is some values here that 
uh, exists in the data set so that it will it shows us that there is something here it's not empty so same with the total amount it's very crazy to think that i mean we're seeing something tiny here but also here so it's very crazy to think that someone paid six hundred thousand dollars for their taxi trip so immediately we see that okay there are some outliers and there's something wrong so um first look at the rate code id uh, to see what might be going wrong. So this is a, a function that I use. It basically shows you what it shows you here in, uh, in this way. It's very, uh, very useful. So what was rate code ID? Yeah, and in which area the taxi uh, trip happened. So I guess this is, this is normal. Mostly, I guess everyone is in this area and then, you know, then as you go higher, it's less likely. Uh, so I guess this is fine. There is nothing wrong with this. Um, feature but I want to look at total amount because this is not normal something is wrong here okay so when I plot everything from the total amount so these are every single data points and these are their values. So I'm plotting everything that I have in my um, data set. So what I see here is that basically the majority of the values are here. And then we have very few that are very, very high. So I'm just going to look at the ones that are less than a thousand to see, you know, what does it look like here where I just see a line so that I can understand what's going wrong. Okay. So it really looks like we have a couple of outliers and, but the majority of action is happening under a thousand. And there are also some negative values that we have to deal with. I don't know how these happened, but we have to do something about them because, um, yeah, that that's not okay to have a negative value in your data set when you're trying to predict how much money a taxi driver will make in a certain region. So, um, yeah, as I noted here, there are two things that we have to deal with, the negative values and the very high values. Um, yeah, so we'll first look at the negative values and understand what we can do to them.